All right, before we move to the next step, we now have a power MOSFET we want to mount. Power MOSFET mounts by the 104 and the 102 here. Power MOSFET. Um, Is the one marked FQU13NO6L? Yes. And we'll mount on the board with the heat sink side towards the really thick line on your board. Pretty straightforward there. Uh, they highly recommend that you just take a piece of tape, hold it in place. We can then flip it over. And gently solder the pins. All right. Now, once we've got that on there, usually you want to check square. Um, I'm never actually too concerned with how square it is. Then our next step is to make sure we come in and snip off all three of the pins because we do not want the length of the pins left on here. And then make sure we get all that debris over into our little debris pile we're making. At least we've got it collected in one spot. So that's our power MOSFET. Next, we will be mounting the rectifier. It is the only other three pin little guy we've got. It likewise has a uh, heat sink. The heat sink mounts towards the thick white line on the board. Again, recommend using a piece of tape. Get it pretty close to square, like however you want it, and then flip it over and solder it. Um, Unless you move the screws like every single time, it's not going to stay perfectly square, but... I've never really cared about that, so... Goodness. Alright, there's our rectifier mounted. Again, same thing. We we'll want to come in here and mount them. Uh, the instructions would definitely recommend you only soldered one of these pins at a time. Did one pin and then checked its orientation so you knew it was perfectly up and down like how you want it. Um, as I've said before, never something I've been too concerned about. So next, we're going to mount the terminal block. Um, I very much want the four pin terminal block on here. I know some may not, but I very much want this four pin terminal block on here. It is listed as an optional item. I don't really think it's optional. Terminal blocks are something I have added to every single one of my builds even if they weren't, didn't come to it and were meant to be soldered on. And that's our four pin, or six pin terminal block across. Um, next is our three pin header. So it's a three pin right angle header that comes with this guy. It's this little guy and it mounts 
right here next to our Wi-Fi board. Um, this one you definitely, again, want to use some tape for. For trying to hold it in place. I don't know how well it's really going to go for you. Um, the instructions recommend you solder one pin at a time. Oh boy, there goes my camera. Oh boy. GoPro, stop recording. Fit. Um, next, we're actually going to be soldering on these three pins They're from the right angle header, if you remember. Oh, well, you should. For you, it's only been a couple of seconds. For me, it's been like half an hour of playing with camera settings. So, that is our three pin header. Mount it on there, nice and neat. So after that three pin header is our two pin header, which goes by the Wi-Fi module in our programming spot. So this most likely, based on the fact that it's named programming, is what we're gonna use when we wanna program the board. Um, so how that function will be, performed is we'll actually use one of these jumpers to jump across that and do it. Go ahead and clean that tip again. Alrighty. And that's the two pin header. All right, next we are mounting our four pin sip. So the four pin sip goes here, right next to that. You'll notice one end has the square knocked off on it and we've got a dot on this end of our sip. So that dot will actually line up with the square. So it'll go in right like that with basically the text on the sip towards our uh, 2.4 Wi-Fi module. We of course then flip it over adding just enough solder get our connection and I like that a lot next we're going to be mounting our other two pin header to the run location so right here there's a run and it's actually labeled run um, it's next to our uh, antenna and so we'll use that We'll flip it over real quick. Come in here and get her going. Alrighty. That did not mount square for anything. So. Let me go ahead and grab hold of this guy with a pair of pliers. Uh, we're actually going to go ahead and call it good as it is. That melted a little bit when I did that, and I don't like that. So, for me, it is at a little bit of an angle. Um, I'm calling that not the end of the world. Next thing we need to do is mount the antenna. So, that is 
really probably the simplest part of this entire thing. We've got a screw in here that we will back out. Let me actually scroll up real quick back to my image. And what we're going to do is that this goes flat on here. Our screw comes through from the other side to sandwich the antenna on. So that's how the antenna should look when mounted. Um, it's pretty centered on the board uh, overall. Our next thing is our battery pigtail. The battery pigtail goes right here. I have the battery connector I want to use and I am using a little JST connector here. I've got actually pretty long leads. Um, I'm gonna need to test that my wire will actually fit into battery holes. Uh, they do not at this time. Ooh, they're not greatly cleaned up. I am so sorry I hit that again. That is like the fifth or sixth time this video I have done that. Alright. Actually really well connected. I think anyway. I'm gonna just kind of bend those wire leads over because I'm trying to keep them like as seated as I possibly can. I do not want these coming unseated while I try to solder them on real quick. I'm not putting huge amounts of force into it. I just gotta get it to wick into everything. There's that guy. Now I'm actually going to come in here and I'm going to snip it off. Alright, I got those terminals cleaned up. That took me a little bit more work than I would have liked. So, so that is the end of our Quasar build. Um, Pretty much the next thing is we're going to plug in the 2S LiPo battery that I have to the pigtail. Uh, you hear some quick beeps and then a long one. If you do not hear any beeps, immediately disconnect the battery and then go to the troubleshooting check section. Uh, good chances are you have a solder bridge somewhere. So initially we're going to power it up and see if we get the beeps we should get. Um, more than anything, that's really the first thing we want to see. So I've got a LiPo here, 2S. And we will see if she is working. That sounded roughly correct. All right. There's a red LED flashing on our Hope RF module. That means it is transmitting data that we could read for um, the EggFinder LCD, which I will program this to work with my EggFinder LCD um, in a moment. But initially what we're gonna do is actually connect to the Quasar via Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna see if I need to adjust my setup any before we get going here. All right, I'll set this off to the side. We're gonna see if I can find it. So initially I have 
Quasar, NFC, yada, yada, yada. I will click on that and get a thing to show up. I will then need to enter the pass key without... Uh, spaces. It should be eight digits. Um, I just took it off screen because I don't really want you guys to know my password. Um, you'll need to turn off your mobile. This at least is how it works for mine. Um, it will scream that it has no internet. I get that. Um, but now we are connected to our Quasar. And this is a flight system. And that is it saying, hey, we connected to a Quasar. Okay. The page accidentally refreshed. So you gotta be careful on your down swipe because every time you refresh, it will beep. Um, you basically could enter in this code to arm and disarm it. You can see um, your drogue delay is zero seconds, you, which is um, nose over on all of these things. It is nose over for all egg timer products, which basically means the time when your rocket goes up and as soon as the nose tips over, that or goes up and as soon as the nose tips over, that's the point at which it um, has issues. So let's, let me actually like flip this over for you guys. So you can enter in your chart, your code right here. It is 1030 for me at the moment. So if I typed it in there and hit refresh, it would change to armed, but I do not have live uh, charges at the moment. You can see zero seconds and 500 feet. Again, zero seconds is nose over. Um, that's not Apogee, it's nose over for Drogue. Um, uh, and it refreshed anyway. Um, we can see the battery is at 7.22 volts, so it actually needs charged pretty badly. Uh, and it's saying it gets no GPS feed, which is not surprising. We're in the basement of my house. My auxiliary channel is currently not in use. We can go into settings and flights. Flights will show us current flight data. I can go back and settings will let us go in and adjust our launch detection altitude, our um, launch samples, our descent samples, and our auto arm is currently on no. I could set it to yes and it would automatically arm whenever I plug it in. I will be running a Quasar with a switch anytime I'm running it with charges. Um, I will never be running it with just the battery plug straight in just because that is requirements under AAA rules. Um, actually, let me go back into settings. There's apparently a hardware button down here. That's new. Um, let's me look at voltage offset tone uh, post flight buzzer. Ooh, it's serial. That's good. That means it will beep out data. Uh, frequency is set up to 915 ID0. Ooh, can I change it from here? That would be cool. Uh, I want to change that to frequency 921 ID7. Submit. Dude. Um, let me see if this actually is working real quick. So I ran off real quick just to grab a battery um, for my egg timer tracker. So I'm gonna grab my tracker real quick. 921 ID7 is what I use. Um, yeah, not my favorite thing to just go ahead and tell you guys that, but you saw me enter it on there, so um, it's what I tend to use. Let's see if I actually can get a connection. Um, you'll actually see a video on the box I'm using. It should be one of the next videos I put out on my egg timer stuff, um, but I call it kind of my ultimate egg finder tracker box. Um, that was it reconnecting to the uh, phone, as you saw there. Um, my box I'm currently using says it's waiting for TRS, which is normal, which I didn't actually check if I need. Oh, that connected it. So it is connected. It is waiting for GPS module.
All right, so our complete problem was something really, really dumb. Um, I forgot to install this jumper pin here next to the GPS module. Uh, that jumper is the run jumper and is the well, is required to make your GPS function at all. I also currently have this jerry-rigged into um, a 6200 milliamp battery. I was reading their page and they were really recommending you use a 500 milliamp battery and I was using a 300 milliamp hour battery. So I'll be looking at getting a 500 to 1000 milliamp hour battery to run with the Quasar in the future. For the moment, quick testing. I'll should be able to jump back to that for some outdoor testing. But what we can see on here is we're now getting no fix yet. Before we were getting like no GPS data at all. Now it says no fix yet. We shouldn't get a fix while we're sitting here in the basement of my house, but we'll jump outside real quick, hook everything back up, see if we get a fix here, see if we can get a fix on our box and uh, see what we see. So we took literally one step outside and immediately we had GPS data, which is incredible. So it gives me latitude, longitude, um, and a bunch of other data, which is really cool to have. Um, I've also got my tracker box down here active. Um, it is still waiting for fix, um, but as soon as it gets a fix on this thing, we should have um, connection. Uh, the tracker box does actually have backlight which makes reading this a whole lot easier. I don't know how easy that is to see on camera, but. While we're outside and it's very much almost dark, uh, it, it really pretty much is dark. Um, hoping we can get a fix on this real quick. Come on, buddy. There it is. All right, I now have All right, here is my I'm gonna actually turn this on. Here is my favorite mode. So it gives me um, compass distance or compass direction, distance and uh, an actual arrow pointing in direction and then time since last connection. Uh, usually it'll wait a little bit and we'll get an update. Um, every like 30 to 45 seconds um, and it'll change the direction. It's gonna be kind of hard right now Also, it knows that we're at like zero feet on our distance So if I move away, it'll actually get um, bigger distances Which let me snag the camera from my beautiful wife so Oh wow, it is just a bright yellow box Not very helpful Out here um, so, so we're now showing like a distance of four feet, which is not quite right. We'll have to work on calibrating that data. Um, this thing's being a little janky today, but we're actually getting data, which is absolutely incredible. We are getting... Um, yep, that flashlight helped a ton. Thanks, babe. We are getting uh, GPS direction. Um, I can get a compass heading and distance. Um, distance is reading like negative four feet. I'm not quite sure why it's doing that. And then my favorite mode gives us the uh, angle too. But uh, I'm gonna guess probably some of our issues are we're running on too small a battery while it's transmitting. So it will have a lot easier time in the future when I get the right size battery. But for the time being, that is the Egg Timer Quasar working with our tracking box. Um, you will see the tracking box assembly in the next video. Um, it's really nothing special as to how it went together, but we're excited to actually get to use this in the field. One last quick reminder, don't forget to take the uh, feet off your uh, Quasar before you go and start mounting it. I've left them on there just because it is very convenient to be able to set this down on the table and have that supporting it. Um, I really like that concept, but be sure you remember to take them off before you fly it. <laughs> Thanks for watching, gang. It has been an incredible build to get this thing working. Uh, some of the troubleshooting stuff is pretty entertaining. Um, I'm quite baffled at myself for forgetting to put the run jumper on. Um, it was very much in the instructions. I just totally forgot to do it. 
um, that run jumper is 100% of what keeps your GPS running. Uh, if you change it from run to program, uh, which is over here, um, that is how you would program the ID. Uh, if you connected this directly to your egg finder um, tracking LCD via the three pins up here. Um, if you don't do it that way, um, you apparently can do it through the Wi-Fi module, which is like incredible. I absolutely love that. It makes setting this data so much easier being able to use the Wi-Fi module uh, connection. But I really hope to get some uh, flight footage and uh, in-field use of this in the coming months. Until then, I'll see you all in the next video. We're going to be building that egg finder tracking box.